option pricing explain or pricing options properly let's go let's go deep hopefully that will be helpful guys when you understand those critical components of options and you really master time value implied volatility and real value in an option pricing and understand how those three components works you'll be much better at buying options you'll be better at selling options and you'll understand support and resistance and implied volatility so i'm going to take examples case studies and hopefully that will help you a lot so when you look at an option guys any options there's three components so let's say i'm taking a dollar option that dollar option is going to be broken into three components okay so it's going to be broken into real value in the options so let's say you buy a one dollar call strike price amazon you know 3500 and let's say the current price of amazon is 3500 right so you will have real value above the 3500 strike price so let's say the current price is 3502 to make it interesting the real value will be two bucks but you can have an option let's say that is priced 10 bucks and the rest of the options will be time value right and implied volatility in the option so the time value could be three bucks even more than the real value the implied volatility could be seven so i thought we had five so five bucks so five plus three plus two ten you have your ten dollar options so every option is broken down in three component again real value time value implied volatility now let me show you why it's important let's look at a real case study with a real option chain right now. so if i go to an option chain on amazon right here and we go to trade tab i have four strikes for september's that are shown on amazon so let's go for let's see options that expire even tomorrow so look here the option expires tomorrow. The current price on the options is 34.71 at the close. So let's go here at the 34.70, which is at the money put or cost. Look how much they are asking for the cost. 69 bucks. 69 bucks, right? For an option that just closed at 34.71. 68 bucks. So what does that mean? You look 6970. Let's say we look at the call. And this is an example live that I'm taking. How many points are we above the strike price of 3470? Only a 0.31. So only a 0.31 is real value in this option. Everything else is term value to expiration tomorrow and implied volatility. So how can you have $68, so, uh, also 68 almost 40 right, of crap? It's because we go to the earnings tonight. Tonight is the Amazon earnings. And that's a very good example to show you that at the money, at the current price right now, the calls are priced at 69.70 going into earnings. That's crazy. But look what happened just came out with the earnings and they had a 124 point expected move here on the earnings so that's pretty cool because you're looking live a live case study with earnings coming up we close at 34.71 the expected move was 123 124 so that would have been roughly five and six 3600 look we've already blown up the expected move and by the way, I've done an Amazon video two days ago, two days before the earnings that you can check that is very helpful, showing you how to anticipate earning expectations, expected move, etc. So now, the guy who bought that thing at 69 at the close, it looks like he was buying a lot, a lot of crap at $68. But the guy who took the risk is coming up tomorrow with almost 150 point move in his direction right so you want to really understand what is real value time value implied volatility in an option same here let's take an spy which doesn't have a, 
uh, earning release tonight. So the SPY closed at 420 even. 420 even right there. Look how much the calls are, a dollar or four. So you have a dollar or four into what? How much is the real value? Well, the real value as of now is zero. There's no real value going into that option. There's no intrinsic meaning, real value above the strike price. Time value and implied volatility, those are the two components left to break down the 104. So I don't know, it could be 54 cents here, right? And it could be another 50 cents here. The point of the matter is you need to understand those three components. Now I'm going to show you why I love puts and why I am not a big fan of calls because of those components in relationship to support, resistance, and those three components. When you master this, pricing options and having options pricing explained to you is much easier for people to not make mistakes when you buy and sell options. So let's take an example. I did a little bit of a slide for you guys and hopefully you'll appreciate it and your likes, comments are always super appreciated to the feed. So let's look here. I'm trying to gather this uh, slide for you. Let's look at an option. The only thing that we know for certainty when you trade an option is this. Whether you buy an option here, right, at 120 days, 60 days, 30 days, under 30 days, is at expiration, the time value of the options goes to zero. So the options goes down, down, down in value because the time value of the options component goes down always goes down to zero. That is very important because I'll show you an example of weekly options. So let's go to an example. And you'll see why I like puts more than calls and it's super important. Here's a, the one dollar option example that we've uh, talked about. So let's say you buy a one dollar option right there and you buy it on Monday, it's a weekly option. On Monday, you look at the weekly option as you say, ding, 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 ding. I have, let's say 10 cents of real value, 40 cents, right, of time uh, decay and 50 cents. The only thing that I know by Friday, if it's a call or a put options that I buy on Monday, the only thing that I know, assuming that the stock stays at about the same level and the IV stays at about the same level, this will remain about 50 cents. This will remain about 10 cents. But guess what? The only thing we know for certainty is the time decay of the option part of that option of that $1 is going to zero. So that kind of sucks because you just bought an asset at one box that is truly worth now 60 cents. That's not cool. You bought something that you felt was a good value at one box on Monday and it's only worth 60 cents by expiration. You lost 40%, you know, of your investment. Now, let me show you some other examples of pricing options and how hopefully that helps you understand how to price options, you know, in a more simple way and explain better to you. You know, because I was buying options and, and, and put in calls all my life before I joined as I work for an hedge fund and uh, uh, prop firms, I never understood really how options were pricing. I was like, okay, bid one, ask 120, okay, boom, let's buy around the mid price at 110. That's all I knew about options. I didn't know that that 110 breaks down into those three components, real value, time value, implied volatility. So let's look at another example for you to go deeper and deeper into the conversation because I am not a big fan of calls. I am more a big fan of call debit spreads because you have a long at your support and a short at your resistance, so you're more protected, right? But I am more a fan of puts in general, and I will explain to you why those three components are more inspired, they are more ready for explosion on the put side than the call options. So let me explain. We go back to another example, all right? And hopefully that will help you. We take our $1 options on Monday, all right? I buy the stock, 
you break it down, there's only 10 cents above the strike price. There is 40 cents of time value, 50 cents of IV. 50 plus 40 plus 10, one box. Now the market goes up, 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 Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, up to Friday. Market goes up. So hold on, look in the left side of my screen. Market goes up. If the market goes up, what happened to the fear, people? Is the fear in the market going up or down? Market up, fear up or down? Aha, uh -huh. fear is going down. Complacency sets in. Market goes up, people become more complacent. Fear drops, meaning that the VIX, right? Or the IV in your options drop. So look what happened. On Friday, the stock went up a lot, okay? So maybe, maybe it went up. But look out of the three components of an option, what goes against me? As the market went up, the fear went down, complacency set in, all the VIX and the IV in the options drop. That means IV going against me. Time value, we already know it's going to zero by expiration. So now out of three components in the option on the call, even if the market goes up or slightly go up, it's not going to make me money because the time value will be against me completely to zero at expiration and the IV will go down against me because the market goes up Fear goes down, IV goes down, it's against me. Two out of three, boom, kaput against me. So you really need a lot of explosion in the market to make enough money here, to make enough money to surpass the loss in the time value and the loss in the IV. This is why now you understand. People always ask me, Mark, why you are not a big fan? Of course, this is why now you know logically why I'm not a big fan of calls? Because two out of the three components go against you. This is why I prefer buying at support day trading zones. Uh, a call, selling, it goes up, up, up. Now I sell the day trading zones resistance and I have a deep out of the money 70 delta. And that helps you trading smart with insurance on both sides, everybody. So if this is helpful, hopefully this concept is helpful. I hope it is helpful. Uh, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, comments, that will be appreciated. Most importantly, this is a video that you want to watch three, four, five times. Write some notes and really ingrain, guys, the three components up and down. Now, let me show you why I love puts. Another case study, everybody. Let's go. And now I'll go to the next case study. Now we do the same example with puts. And hopefully that helps you understanding better how to price options, pricing options, and how we do options pricing. And it explains it to you how they really work in, and, and it's very integrate. Okay. So let's say we start the same options. You could buy the same options, but this time it's a put. Totally different scenario. Put, it's Monday. Now the market tank. Market tank, what happened to the fear? Is fear going up or fear going down, guys? Fear goes up. When the market tank, fear goes up, which means IV go up, which means the VIX goes up. So look what's cool. On Friday, I'm looking at my options put, and look what's happening. The market tank, so I'm making real money on the real value, that's good, I make money here. Now I look at the time value, no matter what I do, I'm screwed. It goes to zero by expiration. But look what's happening. The IV by expiration goes up in my favor. So now I have IV and real value going up. Now I have two out of the three component on the options. Guys, when I do the puts that are in my favor, whereas when I showed you the calls, I had two out of three against me. So I hope this helps you understand how pricing options works. It helps you better understand how to have options pricing and it's explained to you hopefully in a better way. If you want more video like this, guys, check the video below. There's a subscription to our YouTube channel. Subscribe, like, you know, click the bell to get when we go stream live. 
And most importantly, there's a video on the descriptions below that shows you how I took last year, real money in COVID, real accounts. That's why we do a $28,000 account to $121,000 account. And there's another one that shows you how I took a $10,000 account trading the SPY mainly into a $42,000 account. If you want to master options and options pricing and better understand how it's explained, you must watch this video hopefully two, three times, help you understand real value, time value, and implied volatility. Because as you can see, last but not least in this video, who makes the real money? No matter what, if I am up two out of the three component or down two out of the three component, who makes the real money? Let's go back to the charts. You know, it's always the option sellers, guys. I have a higher chance to make money with puts, but option sellers always make the money. Why? Because they know that no matter what, if this stays stable and this tanks or this stays stable, that always goes to zero the time value. And this is why options, professionals and institutions usually most of the time, 90% of the time sell options deep out of the money because the options traders are the people who make money and the options buyers, 90% of the options buyer, the options calls expire worthless. Actually calls are crap, guys. If you watch this video two, three, four times, you will understand why calls are way more dangerous than put. Okay, guys, hopefully that was helpful. You take care, everybody.